All right, so I want to take a quick look at how to balance chemical equations using matrices. So I have in front of me a chemical equation. Uh, I'm not going to pretend like I know what these compounds are named. Uh, I know the elements, though. If you quiz me later, I will have the answers. Um, so let's talk about how we do this using matrices. So the idea is here I have uh, four compounds. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is come up with coefficients that I can place in each of these positions whereby the equation is balanced. I have the same number of uh, al aluminum molecules on one side as I do on the other side, and same with iron and nitrogen. Uh, see, I told you I knew them. So uh, how do we do this? Well, the first thing is you need to think about what I just said. Each of these compounds, uh, if I represent it like this, I have x1 times my first compound plus x2 times the second compound yields x3 times a third compound plus x4 times a fourth compound. And I could do this, of course, with more compounds and certainly more elements than I have in this one. But uh, let's take a look at this specific example. All right, so each of these compounds, then, I want to represent as a vector. So for the first compound, what I'm going to do is just in a convenient way, I want each compound to represent in each position the number of atoms of aluminum or iron or nitrogen uh, within that compound. So I'll make a note of that to myself, aluminum, iron, nitrogen. Okay. In the first compound here, it's just aluminum. So I have one aluminum atom, zero iron atoms, zero nitrogen atoms. For the second compound right there, I have zero aluminums, three irons, and two nitrogens. All right. On the other side, this compound, I have one aluminum, no irons, and one nitrogen. And the last compound, I have no aluminum, uh, an iron, and no nitrogen. All right. So I see these vectors right here. So the idea is, if I come back up here to this equation right here, and I wrote it with the arrow, but it is an equation, make no mistake. The idea is I can subtract these compounds to the other side to yield an equation that looks more like this. This will equal to zero. Since we're thinking in terms of vectors, it will equal to zero vector. All right. Well, I know that then. Then I can look at these compounds right here, and I can view this as this is a linear combination of four column vectors. Now, be careful when you're doing this, because there's one very easy mistake to make. The first column is the first compound, one aluminum. Second column, zero, three, two. Third column is this third uh, compound. Make a note, since these were subtracted, I have to change the sign. So I don't want 1, 0, and 1. I want negative 1, 0, and negative 1. For the last compound, I want 0, negative 1, and 0. Now I can augment this with a column of zeros or not. It really doesn't matter uh, since it is the 0 vector uh, that I, since this is does equal the 0 vector, it does not matter if I put these zeros here. Any row operations will keep that the 0 vector. So the idea is now to take this matrix right here, whether you augment it or not, enter it into a calculator, and put it in row reduced echelon form. So uh, I have already done that. I'll show you in just a second here as I grab my matrix. Okay, Here's my matrix. It's 3 by 5. I did augment it with a column of zeros. So you see that right there. And you see right here, the first row, 1, 0, negative 1, 0, and 0. And the next uh, row, 0, 3, 0, negative 1, and 0. And the third column is also what we need. So I'm going to quit out of here. And what I need to do is uh, go to, I'm sorry, that was a little below the screen. Uh, but I entered this matrix with the augmented column. Now what I need to do is go back to my matrix table, or options, excuse me, and I need to put this in row reduced echelon form, which is way down option B. From this, I want to go to back to my matrix, and I'm going to row reduce matrix A. 
And I see here I get some decimals. The calculator is smart. Your calculator can just change these to fractions. You should probably do that. And what I see in row reduced echelon form is this. If I RREF this, then what I get is 1, 0, 0, negative 2 thirds 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1 third 0, and 0, 0, 1, negative 2 thirds 0. Okay. Now, at first, uh, this might seem a little strange that we got negative numbers, but what you have to remember here is what each of these equations represents. This first one represents x1 minus 2 thirds x4 is equal to 0. Well, that does make sense because that's just saying that x1 is 2 thirds of x4. Similarly, each of these other equations, uh, I'm expressing x2 and x3 as a multiple of x4. Now, in each case, uh, it's two-thirds or one-third. X2 is one-third of X4. Uh, X3 is two-thirds of X4, just as X1 is. Uh, so what does this mean? Well, this means that since I want my moles, I know, to be integers, I want to pick X4 whereby these will be integers. Since the denominator is three, the most convenient thing to do is let X4, the free variable, be uh, three. So I'll write out my full solution here, my full general solution. X2, I add this over, and it's one-third X4. X3 is two-thirds X4. And X4 is free. So I get that solution. Now, as I said, I want these to be integers. So I let X4 equal three, which then forces X1 to equal two x2 to equal 1, and x3 will also be 2. Now once I have that established, I now uh, know how to balance this chemical equation, and I can write that x1 is so 2 aluminums plus 1, whatever this compound should be called, yields uh, 2 aluminum and nitrogen, whatever that's called again, plus three irons. Okay, So uh, again, you probably uh, might remember how to do this from chemistry, but in this class we want to know how to do it using matrices. So make sure you know how to do it with this setup. Uh, hopefully that has been helpful.